Live from Pahrump, it's Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. And if you thought I was just operating under crunch time, it's Logan's time to shine because this show, as you may know, if you watch regularly, is brought to you by KTM. And KTM is based out of Mattinghofen. 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 I don't even say it right. Austria. KTM has set the standards for motorcycle manufacturing and development. KTM has provided a ready to race mentality in every product it developed. That's all I've got. Oh, yeah. <laughs> these are called learning teachable <laughs> moments, like uh, yes. George likes to call them. So uh, Logan didn't do his homework assignment. In fact, the reason that it wasn't up on YouTube. So if you're a YouTube watcher, you can watch the show on YouTube, usually a day after, maybe a day and a half after we record this live tonight. But last week, Logan came in. I had to go ride the new Honda. Of course, you know, that's my job. And his job is to get Tech Talk Taco Tuesday published. And that sort of didn't happen because why? The thing didn't save right. The thing didn't save right. The thing, like the the whole the whole video. I thing. don't. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta get more specifics. It's like it's like somebody saying, <laughs> "I have a bike and I not don't like it. Can you help me?" And I, I want I want to give you really I really want to give you good detailed advice. So we're gonna we'll, we'll work on it so that the thing saves next time <laughs> and uh, get it better. Uh, do you have your questions for today? We've got a lot of questions. We've got some good ones. We've got some bad ones. And we have uh, 32 people in the chat room that are probably just chomping at the bit to drop the question bomb on us. Uh, if you have a question about dirt bikes or dirt bike related products, we can answer 99 out of 100 without referring to a reference manual. Um, usually don't have anything to sell you other than um, a KTM, right? Because KTM is powered by a distinct ready to race mentality. Yes. Yeah. Did you put that in your thing? Yeah. That was in yours? Yeah. I didn't hear it. What about the head, uh, North American headquarters in Murrieta, California? No. No, you didn't put that part in. What about every product it makes? Did you get that line? What's what's the last line? I don't know. I didn't write it up. <laughs> okay. By the end of the show, because I know you're over there goofing off all the time, half the time, because all I do is talk, and you're, I know you have to translate the, the other languages and then um, keep track of the questions. But the, your other job is to try to finish that thing up by the end of the show. Okay. Cool. Good. Yep. Okay. First question. Uh, on Tuesday, September twenty second, two thousand twenty, at Oh, you don't have to read the top part. That's just the extra garbage I forgot to clip out. <laughs> so it says, hi, my name is... Kevin Donovan. I race hair scramble races. I use the dry brake system from IMS products. I s seen your dust cap system, and I would like to purchase one. But before I do that, I would like to know if you would be willing to be one of my sponsors for the rest of 2020 season into the 2021 race season. I can send my resume if you would like it. Thank you, Kevin. So uh, Kevin is looking for sponsorship. Yeah. Are you, aren't you in charge of the sponsorship department? Oh no, wait, Trevor is. Yes. Yeah. So I, um, I did, I did uh, write a response. I actually copied my response because I wouldn't remember it. That's kind of, kind of proud of this again, again this logan this is another teachable moment so he's uh kevin donovan and he did send he did after i don't know if he copied both of us that would have been smarter but <laughs> anyway so this is how i responded I said kevin trevor hunter is dbt sponsorship coordinator trevor didn't even know that until probably right now i think we should call him call trevor because we should talk honda um he is also the bike washer and photo editor most of the time he loads our bikes after we ride and washes the bikes when we return home then he edits the video of me riding so we can post it and make me look fast. Right after that, he writes the test of the bike, edits down the photos, and gets stuff posted on the internets. All while putting him through college and continue to train and race at a high level, both motorcycles and mountain bikes. So adding this request to his list is nothing, but I'm sure a resume would be a good addition to this request. And since I'm curious, what type of support are, looking, are you looking for and what would we get in return? 
Regards, Jimmy. That's the answer I gave him back. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> he, he, sent, he said he was going to promote us really good, I think, was what, 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 I, got, what I got back. But uh, I probably sent out some sponsorship requests um, that were m- m- potentially like the ones that Kevin did. Um, but I think I was a, maybe a little more specific. Uh, and I actually targeted somebody that actually had something to sell. <laughs> so we don't necessarily have something to sell. Uh, but uh, I mean, we maybe, maybe we get him a sticker, a sticker. Like the, like we got the dinosaur sticker and all he does is hold tacos. In fact, he hasn't even, that dinosaur has not even proven himself yet. And we were able to give him a sticker. So stickers probably available, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. T-shirt. What about a t-shirt? He said, oh, you know, he did request a hoodie he, in, in the, in the, in the, that came with the, the resume. I think he had a hoodie, which um, it's too hot for hoodies in Nevada. So we don't have them. I don't know where, um, I don't remember where it is from, but t-shirt would be, that'd be like a higher level sponsorship and. I mean, like, well, we'll, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> uh, okay. I got it. The next question right down there. What's, what's that? Um, hello. How are you doing? My name is Joey Lee Wilson. I am 28 years old and I wanted to learn about motocross. That's the whole question. Yes. Okay. Logan, that's your, do you take that one? Um, in the future, Dirt Bike Test is going to post a, online magazine that will help with that oh wow that's a bomb you just dropped (laughs) that's good maybe we should talk about that the the online magazine yeah 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 you can ask some questions about that later are we gonna have a story about motocross like what is motocross i don't know i thought you were kind of planning on the bridge between adventure and motocross although yeah we're gonna build the bridge yeah (laughs) Uh, yeah, yeah, you heard it. You heard it here first, right? <laughs> um, yeah, the cat's out of the bag. <laughs> We're doing a digital magazine. Um, I showed the cover at the end of the show, but nobody watches that long. So like 12 people saw it. <laughs> Sometimes if you stay for the whole time, you'll get like, I think the information actually potentially gets better at the end of the show because we quit BSing around about funny stuff and we start answering real questions. So ans- let's ask her another real question. Uh, Justin, thanks for reaching out. Uh, we do not have any experience with that particular year or conversing. Oh, wait, no, no. That's an answer, I think, yeah. to a question. Yeah. Well, where's the, Justin. where's the question? Uh, oh, is the question on top of, uh, there's on the question, is it on a different page? There's nothing on <laughs> that page. Unless they got mixed up. They could get mixed up. So Oh, he. I mean, let me. I'll remember the question. Maybe I just didn't clip it right. Eh. There's a lot of cut and paste going on in a, in a big fury. It's almost like Logan trying to write the KTM commercial. <laughs> um, Justin said, "Let's see. I don't remember. See, could it be at the the Jimmy? Jimmy. I know that's my signature. Um, oh, thanks for reaching out. We do not have any experience with that particular year." Or conversion, so it is impossible for us to help you other than generalizations. Remember, uh, oh, he he had a really specific question about jetting. Um, oh, I know what it was. He converted he converted a KTM uh, three two hundred and fifty to a three hundred. He bought the kit. You can buy a kit from KTM, and it was uh, I think it was for the SX because he did have. Um, he did have uh, jets, and so he wanted to know. He and he had some real specific information about. I put this on it. I put the, you know this and that, and it's like I can't. I can't jet your bike over the email. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's kind of kind of impossible. So, um, and he's also I believe he was in South Africa um, or, or Australia. I, 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 nah, maybe South Africa. And I was just judging by the email, like where it said it came from. So I said, I said, you know. I can't do that over the phone. And remember, there are different fuels, ECU settings for different countries, and many other factors. The pipe, the muffler you're using, the reeds, the power valve, it all plays into your jetting. Now, so that's why I told him. I said, our experience with older conversions like this was that the jetting would remain the same 
if the only change was going to be changing from a 250 to a 300. In other words, take the 300 cylinder or 250 cylinder and piston off, put the 300 cylinder back on, everything else stays the same. Uh, the jetting would not change. Uh, maybe if you were getting picky, you would do like a needle clip position or a jet here and there. And in reality, his setting was only like one size richer on like everything is what he sort of... Uh, was asking if it was correct. And I mean, you're going to be safe there, but just because you're going bigger doesn't mean you need to go richer. Uh, that's kind of, it's not necessarily true. And and then I said, if there was a big difference, and usually involved changing the needle to the one that came with the 300. But oftentimes in those days, the 300 riders would go to the 250 needle in their 300 because they liked the performance better. It just was a different character. Uh so I said, yeah, sorry if we can't be more help. Jetting by email isn't so easy. I said, tell us exactly how it runs. You know, explain how it runs. And then we could make further instructions or search out some basic jetting guidelines and go from there. Because there's all kinds of really good charts that will tell you, hey, when it's rich here, lean here. But then how do I know whether it's rich or lean? That's that's another, you know, kind of tricky question. And I always tell tell people, well, if it's if it's, Turn your choke on and ride it. That's what rich feels like. And and then, you know, lean, <laughs> you're going to love this one. You want to know how I learned what a lean two-stroke felt like? Just a little bit lean? I cleaned, I made sure my airbox was really clean, and I rode it on the pavement. I took the airbox off. Air, belt, air, 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 air not airbox, air filter out of the airbox and rode it. That will give you the lean sensation. I knew my bike was jetted pretty good. And so I tried both of those two things and that's, I mean, it's really rich when you put the choke on, but, uh, that's how you can, that's how you can start learning. There's, there's kind of ways and, and me telling you whether it's rich or lean or what it feels like is not as good as you going out and experiencing. it. So, um, yeah, that's that question. Um, yeah. So there, there's a question. Remember how the question sometimes on the bottom, I should fix that when I <laughs> cut and post those. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, Jimmy. Yeah, no, no, no. We got to flip the page. We were done with that. That whole page was oh. that one question. Yeah, my feed locked up here on the on the thing. So, are we getting questions? Uh, mine's my video is still playing. Good. And I haven't really gotten anything new. Okay. Run pump fuel with fifty to one ratio. That's. Oh, that's the end of the. That's the end of his thing. That's he was running pump okay. fuel at fifty one, but pump fuel in a different country. <laughs> ah. Um. Oh, so that's his jetting spec there. <laughs> Even yeah. below it, yeah. I think where's the next? So you got to figure out what the next question is. Right here. Okay. Uh, Jimmy, I'm a longtime Garmin GPS user, the only GPS I have ever used, and very comfortable with the operating system. I have also used a spot tracker generation three and have been satisfied with the performance of the device. And I still need to carry a satellite phone to communicate. Once the spot X came out, I purchased, purchased that and no longer needed to carry the sat phone. The spot X is terrible on the tech side of things. The tracking works good though. I had I known Spot was the global star network and Garmin is on the Iridium, yep, I never would have purchased the Spot X. Do your research right. I'm looking at the InReach product. I know you ride alone a lot, as I do on motos and mountain bikes. And also, I frequently Baja and ride in out of reach areas. Given my experience with Garmin GPS, which device texts in GPS, the Garmin cells, would you recommend? So, I, 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 I have been using InReach when it was Delorm InReach and then Garmin Bottom, which I, you know, in, in my thing, I wasn't super stoked because... Um, for me, Garmin is a little bit like Apple where they tend to make some of their stuff pretty proprietary. In other words, you have to use a lot of their interfaces to get the information out of the device that you need. So, uh, 
it was my inReach was really easy to use. Luckily, they kind of migrated all that interface over, and it stayed mostly the same. The satellite network being in Iridium, especially down in Baja, for some reason, I don't know why, but the the network down there seems to be better. Um, the satellite coverage down there seems to be better. And then when I've gone really far north, like up you know near Canadian border, the the because I used to have a spot also, and I remember how how it tracked and stuff. So I think on on most of the fronts, the 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 now Garmin in reach is a little bit better. Just about everything I run, I have an older version, not the newest version, but the older version that allows me to do everything I need to do with that device through the device. So I can I can scroll through a, and it doesn't, doesn't have a keyboard, but I can scroll through the the letter picker and and send text messages out with half, out having to rely on my phone, which is pretty important because. If your phone goes dead and that's the only way you can communicate with your device to send detailed messages out, then it's in some ways is kind of useless. Um, so I like the one that allows me to have, so it's just a single device. I just keep it working and then I don't have to worry about other stuff. Um, but I would, I, I mean, and I haven't, I guess Spot has something new, but it's still on the same network. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. So it's just kind of a, it's, just picking, you know, what's going to work, and I think there's a couple new systems coming out uh, that I've that I've been told about, but I don't have any experience. But everybody that I know is kind of switched over to the the inReach, and we all run the bigger unit. We don't run the small little min, inReach Mini because we've had instances where someone has it, and all they can push is kind of help or I'm okay or you know just the generic messages. When all they needed to say was I have a flat tire and I'm going slow or you know, yeah, I've crashed and I'm a little bit hurt, but don't you don't have to try to drive out to get me. I'll be able to ride to this location or whatever. And we, we have a couple systems that we use that maybe someday I should do a podcast just dedicated to the way that we use our tracking systems and how we kind of communicate. It's um, it's it's pretty interesting and, it, and, it, and it's been very effective. It, it involves we know we have friends that are sitting in front of computers all day long and they're kind of our sort of watchdogs and they randomly check to make sure that you're constantly moving. So when I'm out riding by myself, if I'm constantly moving, everything's good. If it doesn't move and I don't send an okay message, something's wrong at that point. Like, and especially if it's someplace, I mean, if it stops at a restaurant, right, you know, okay, he's in the restaurant, but if it's out in the middle of the desert and it stops moving for more than 30 minutes, something is wrong. Cause if I stop for more than 30 minutes, I will send a message, say I'm delayed or I'm stopping here you know, just so everybody that's watching knows. But anyhow, good question. Um, but uh, that's that's what I use, and um, uh, I think it's good. Um, that one's from Eric Featherson. I got a question on the uh, on the board here. So Chris Smith asks, <laughs> you're going to like this, the other Jimmy that's in here. So what's the difference between KTM and Gas Gas? I noticed the 300 is $600 cheaper with Gas Gas. We were just discussing this before we kind of went live. Um, I, you know, glanced right over the top of the press release this morning because I'm like, I looked at it quickly and I'm like, okay, I kind of went in there to see which models. I posted their video up on the website and then I was, I w- I've been working on writing the trials bike test. So I kind of got distracted and, and went down that rabbit hole for me. So we were talking that I think that some of the, the components on the gas gas are a little bit different than the uh, the KTM's as far as like the Brembo in, on the brakes on the off-road bike, we thought. Maybe the brakes are uh, brake tech and maybe the... Cast clamps. Ca- yeah, it's, so it's the cast clamps. Just some just some different things. So maybe... And, and I was also talking to somebody in the industry. We're trying to figure out like, hey, what is... What's KTM's play with, you know, with gas gas? Is it is it having some additional... European manufacturing capability? Is it the entrance into trials bikes? I mean, they own everything else. They just went to MotoGP and now in four years, they're winning MotoGP. That's that's like the highest level. And it's like literally telling everybody, it's like, yeah, we can come in and, you know, conquer things that were unobtainable. That's a, that's a huge thing. Where do you go next? Well, maybe we'll go back down. We'll go <laughs> pick on the trials people. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, but that, that really does round out their... Um, their line, you know, having a little bit of everything, uh, you know, available to them. And, you know, who knows there, maybe there's bigger grand, more grandiose plans. I, I'm still like the fact that they killed Husaberg still like really drives a stake into my cold and worn out heart. <laughs> but, uh, you know, now we got gas gas. So, <laughs> 
Uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I should dig a little bit deeper, but you know, when you start asking media representatives, so if I called up gas gas tomorrow and I said, Hey, so you're putting the cheap shit on the, <laughs> on the gas gas, they, that, that doesn't really fly. They'll say, no, no, you know, and then they'll have, they'll have a way to kind of, kind of spin it and, and put it. But in reality, if they were to take gas gas and make it like a little bit more price conscious um, brand probably wouldn't hurt. Uh, I think, I mean, I really think there's a need for a, like a, a, a true $7,000 dirt bike that kind of performs. Maybe you can take some adjustment out of the suspension. Maybe you can, um, you know, use a couple parts that are a few years older. You know, the, 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 the thing, you know, Honda just re-released the 2020 Sierra 450 R for a thousand dollars less, but you can buy a brand new 2020 that's re-released. And so there's, there's brands looking at all these different opportunities to, to uh, get your hard-earned money and to try to f- put a bike that really matches what your needs are. I mean, it could it could come down to some of that. So, um, okay, next question, Logan. Um, hello, Jimmy Lewis team slash Logan. Maria from Torque Law, a U.S.-based law firm existing of award-winning dedicated Dedicated professional injury and accident attorneys. Oh, wow. Accident attorneys. Great. I'm emailing you because I saw an article of yours. And basically kind of it's, it's yeah. Jimmy Lewis com slash some numbers slash. And then what does it say? Uh, tip writing tips, trusting the torque of the motorcycle. So I, I get it. I now. Okay. I get it. Yeah. Torque law, trusting the torque of the motorcycle. Go ahead. Uh, wanted to see if you were interested in a small pay, paid collaboration. Since your article is related to law and legal issues, I thought that linked, linking to your our website might be of great help to your audience you, who's interested in legal matters. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's going to help, Logan? You think that think it's going to help my audience? Maybe. Okay, well, yeah, that's why I put you in charge of this. So what's the, ne- what's the next line? Uh, we totally understand that there might be an editorial and an ad- administrative fee for linking to our website. Cha-ching. <laughs> Could you mention the rates if app- applicationable? Applicable. Applicable. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this. Thank you for your in- but in advance, best regards, Maria, Partnership Manager, Torque Law, YouTube. Right, yeah. So yeah, you got to get right on that. Maria is on your it's just on your hit list for tomorrow. Remember the hype man stuff you're supposed to be doing? Yeah, Jeremy boy. Do- yeah, Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy, doing that over here, hyping up your your read there. That's good. Yeah, so you you get right on to really because I, I understand how how trusting the torque of your motorcycle applies to a law firm. Yeah, I I get the I get the correlation. I I'm thinking we're going to start it around like if they want to if they want to link some little hyperlinks in there. Let's let's start at about a thousand, a thousand per link, and and or you know if they want to do some click through stuff, we'll like a hundred bucks a lead. That's 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 where you start. So I'll get you her email address and we'll work on that. Um, Eric and Katie Garrett says, Jimmy, do you have any experience with the Kenda Canarly rear tire? Uh, considering it for my 300 XC for Texas, normally dry, hard pack, dusty, some roots, a little bit, everything. I do not have any experience with that tire, believe it or not. Um, it's kind of new. Um, I ran the Ibex before, uh, and I kind of preferred, especially for dry hard pack, I actually preferred the equilibrium and I am a Kenda guy because the Kenda supports, uh, my schools. So I just want to kind of be clear with that. Um, but, uh, I don't know about the, the Canarly, the K N A R L Y, the Canarly real rear tire. I, I pretty sure it's a newer, it's a revised version. It might be the one that Cody Webb won uh, King of the Motos on. So if it works out there, uh, better than the Ibex, which probably wouldn't be that difficult. The Ibex had really wide spacing and wasn't nearly as as durable. So, um, uh, yeah. Uh, let me if you do get one, let me know how it works. Next question on Logan's agenda. Um, Sierra 450 on the YouTube's. Uh, Zamrock. No doubt you're stretching 
um, as hell, but they are my love. As sketchy as hell? No doubt they are as sketchy as hell. They're my love. Right. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Um, what is? <laughs> what does he mean by sketchy? <laughs> I, I uh, so I don't know if he was the guy I went. Um, <laughs> we'll go, we'll go. Keep going for the CR four hundred and fifty uh, questions. I'm gonna I might try to dial up Trevor right now. And see. Um, Troy Hubbard, the front end looks like it's handling great. What's everyone complaining about? Hopefully, the ridge mapping issue is fixed by the time the bike hits showrooms. That would really suck to spend ten and a half k and have an issue like that. I would assume that these test bikes are pre-production. Okay. Uh, so it's not rich, <laughs> and it's not lean. It's both, whatever it's doing. Um, I don't know exactly what it's doing. Uh, it just makes this little, this little uh, popping noise. And uh, it... it I mean, I've heard some test riders claim that it stalled, and I, I heard some that said it was, you know, different in certain maps and other stuff. And and there was other guys that just absolutely didn't notice it. And it took me, you know, kind of having to to really, you know, get into my gear high riding uh, style, which is not normal for most people to even experience the um, that sort of pop. And you do hear it. I, I heard it when we were, you know, when guys were out doing photos, I could hear it. But nobody really complained about it until they started talking with each other. So this little pop hiccup, whatever it is, is a bigger issue on the internets than it is in the real world. Uh, I'm going to call Trevor here in a minute. Uh, actually, I'm going to call him right now, <laughs> and we'll get to the bottom. He wrote it all day again today, so um, that will maybe potentially help answer the the questions. Let's see if this thing comes online here. Yeah, look at that. What do you know? It's going. Yeah. So the 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 pop or the hiccup is not as much as it's uh, cracked up to be and the other interesting thing about that that noise <laughs> whatever it is is that and, and the bikes in general is they're not pre-production bikes they're actually production bikes that were shipped over with everything else and they just haven't been released to dealers yet and so you know sometimes manufacturers do that cuz they want to get some time and make sure everything's good they have to get the okay from the factory yeah we can release these bikes and um, I don't know that that's, uh, how I, I heard that they're going to be there. So it'll be end of this week or something was what I was told, but I mean, hell, the magazines are already doing shootouts on them. So Trevor Hunter, welcome to tech talk taco Tuesday. You are live on the air. Is this, uh, am I talking to Jimmy Lewis? Yeah, you're talking to Jimmy Lewis. This is, I'm, you're, I, you're my boss. I know I'm not supposed to call you after eight o'clock cause you're studying or it's, it's only seven 30 though. So I'm good. Yeah, right. You're all good. Okay. I oh, I know why there is it, why is there an echo? You got an echo? Uh only on his side. Only on your side. Yeah, are you listening to this someplace else? Are you talking to me? Yeah. Uh I can't say that I am. Okay. <laughs> it might be bouncing into your head into your, my headphones. It's it might be, your, is it coming out of this thing? Into the mic. <laughs> the mic. Oh, okay, yeah. Anyways, uh so Trevor, we're talking about the Honda. How how's the how's the pop because the pop is what everybody is concerned about. Like is it we, did it go away? Um, it has not gone away. So as I was I showed at Glen Helen today, uh, with uh, with Trevor Stewart, uh -huh. second pro level like factory Honda guy. Um, so he had his twenty twenty Honda out there as well. Um, and overall, he he liked it a lot. Liked the bike a lot. Uh, was much better. Even for him, he still noticed that kind of that pop off the bottom, uh, especially like when you're kind of you're rolling the taller gear. And you're like a little smoother on the throttle, mm -hmm. um, but we couldn't really get it to go away other than when we put it in the aggressive map. So it's map three, I think. Um, it wasn't quite as bad. Right. So, so I, yeah, I that that's where I was riding most of the time is in the aggressive map, and I it's it's like I hear it, but I I, I never really felt it. Did, and do you do you notice it? I mean, you 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 don't like revving 450, so. No, so what's funny is like at the intro day, the track was so smooth and just like 
you know, really good that I was kind of almost riding it like a 250F or a 350, like, and I, I was revving it a little more. And so, like, the pop wasn't quite as noticeable. Um, but then today, it was all the pros were out there, so it was super choppy and really rough. Um, and so, I kind of, like, it smoothed me out a little bit. I started riding it more like I would typically would uh, 450. And then it's a lot more noticeable. And definitely could feel it. Um, especially like you get like some of the top of the hills where you're kind of creeping around turns, you drop back down, or if it it's it's kind of like it's kind of like low, not really a load on the motor. Kind of you're just you're just kind of pushing the bike as opposed to really trying to accelerate. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And then yeah. and and then you 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 felt it like it it feels like it's missing. Just a little bit. I mean, it's not. Is it the end of the world? No. But is it there? Yes. Yeah, that's and that's kind of that's kind of what I said. I didn't really like. I could I could hear it more than I could quote feel it. I don't even really know that I could feel it. It was yeah. more just something you you sort of picked up and you go that's that's kind of that's kind of weird. It's not it's not right and and you know like other bikes don't do it. But then there's a lot of differences in whether the you know the gas has changed uh, since they did their testing. And I know that um, the Honda guys are going to go out tomorrow and play around with the HRC tuner and uh, try to try to play around with that and get some stuff. They, they, they suggested turning the idle up a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you guys tried that. Didn't have a chance to try that. I yeah. planned, I think we're going to go out with the Honda guys um, early next week. And so I'll, I'm going to plan on messing with the idle, maybe trying some different gas, and then moving on to using the, the tuning tool. And then from there, we could see if, you know, they'll have the dealers kind of reflash the mapping or the ECUs to change the mapping. Yeah, so that that, that could be something that they could do. It's real easy to, to – it's a competition bike, so there's no big deal with that. They can, they can yep. you know, just flash those things pretty easily. So, yep. yeah, I, it, it's funny because that's just sort of the runaway train on that, on that bike. And it's like, eh, it's, it's really not that big of a deal. I mean, it's, is, it, is it perfect? No. Uh, if If – I, if I had, if I could talk to that, like if I, if that bike were a Yamaha and I could use my power tuner app, I'm pretty sure I could make it go away. Um, and, and I think it's, I, I want to bet that it's a little bit more of an ignition thing than it is kind of a fueling thing, but we'll see. I'm sure it'll come, it'll kind of come out in the, in the pipeline. So, uh, but other than that, uh, how, how did the bike work on the rougher track? Oh man. I, you know, I said last, Last week, that might have been, you know, the best 450 I've ever ridden. Uh huh. And I think that might change just with how I mean, Glen Helm was super. It's pretty gnarly today with all you know, half the outdoor pros out there for whatever reason on a Tuesday. Right. Um, and they ripped it really deep, so the bumps were big, and there's a lot of them. Uh, so it's not your favorite 450 anymore. Maybe I don't know. Yep. I uh, uh, like to just. A little more time on it. Mess, you were like a you were like more. a little little girl, and you rode two fifty Fs at the works race. How rough was it at the works race? Uh, much rougher. Much rougher. So but, it was it was smooth compared to the works race. Yes, but yeah. I can but, scared of four twenties. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so you, you just you, you just your, your experience experience is changing from bike to bike. That's the. That's yep. the the thing here, but so but the problem the problem was is I'm I'm just going to go out on a limb here, is that that Yamaha 250 FX that you rode around Glen Helen was like magical compared to everything else you've ridden in the last two weeks. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> you, you, I'll, I'll tell you what you cannot compare 250 Fs to 450 motocross, you know, to, to 450s no, um, in, in, in handling and suspension. And you especially, you especially like at a rough Glen Helen, it's funny because there's a point where you need to go way stiffer than what a stock motocross bike is to make it work, or you need to go softer, kind of like that FX setting to yep. make a bike work. It's kind of like that Honda, I, I believe, is kind of stuck in the middle. And it's really rare that for most people they get on a track that's as rough as Glen Helen was the last two times you rode it. Not it's tracks are more like the Glen Helen that we rode on, on a Tuesday a week ago. Exactly. Even today, like it's funny. It's like, even like on the mapping, like I kind of last week, I liked the map one because I'd be more aggressive with it. But today I smoothed out and then actually preferred the aggressive map. And that way I could be, I could ride a gear tall through the corners and kind of lug the bike a little more. And then on the suspension side of things, I was starting to stiffen it up quite a bit um, before I got sworn out yeah. at the end of the day. So, What did Scott think of it? He's all ho-hum. 
he didn't he didn't write it. He didn't write it. No, there's too many fast guys out there. <laughs> you, you didn't want to show them up. Hey, they have the REM track for that. You can go yeah, over there and own uh, that place. I don't know if that was open today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, well, hey. Yeah, he's, he didn't want to show Justin Cooper the fast lines, I guess. Yeah. Hey, we we had I I don't know if you I, you I don't know if you checked your email. I put you in charge of the sponsorship department. I saw that. Yeah. Did he send you? Did that kid send you his resume? Not yet. He's probably polishing it up, making sure it's. Oh, after he sent, he sent it to me right away. It came. It, oh. it it needs it needs a polish. Let me tell you. But I I uh, I explained to him. You know, we were deciding whether he was if it was it was okay for um, Kevin to get a sticker, or or if we bump him up to t shirt level. He 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 went straight to hoodie. He said he was going to. Straight to hoodie. Wow. Yeah, I mean, like what 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 would we should we get in return for a hoodie? <laughs> wow. It's going big. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Like. You know, pictures of him and his girlfriend. Like, I mean, you know, out out and about in the town because he said he wanted to wear it out on the town. They, uh, maybe he can ride a product test. A product ride test on the dirt bike test hoodie. Yes, I think that'd be it. That that'd be a good way to start. Okay. Well, hey, get back to your doing your homework. <laughs> uh, all right. I, can do, uh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> right on. Okay, right, Trevor. Thanks for uh, taking the call, and we will see you uh, real soon. All right. Have a good night. All right. Bye. See ya. That was uh, the uh, boss of Dirt Bike Test, Trevor Hunter, uh, 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 taking my call. Lucky he took my call. Otherwise, the show would be just a bunch of questions with hard answers. Uh, Bo Coddington says, Jimmy, what is a good source of Husaberg parts? My 2010 FE450 needs a few things. Um, well, there's a lot of parts that are KTM parts if you can cross-reference them, and then you can get them any place you get KTM stuff. But a really good source is and i'm trying to remember the name it's a it's a guy up in oregon that has a pretty good supply of parts and oh man i can't remember i talked about him on a uh, on a show a few times back when i was having my my exciter coil issues because he knew he knew exactly which part it was and he knew which part it was it's in oregon it's like in in uh near medford i think um, it's an online, I want to say, I want to say it's like, I'm thinking best rest products. Cause that's another guy that's up in cycle by that's it right on cycle by that. They, they were top notch and, and I met him at an event and he, uh, had the, <laughs> anytime I needed Hoosberg stuff, he had it. That was cool. Next, uh, next question, Logan. Um, on the Sierra 450, uh, G. Dendler. G well, you can't say the name. Do you need help? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, got, I'm gonna, I got that doc up on my thing here right now, so I'll you 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 keep poking away at it. G. Gendler? Gen. Gen. What do we? Do Bottom we? Bottom one on the second page. Jed. Jed. Jedi. Jediler. Jed D. Jediler. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Um. Or have dealers with a tool to remap to fix the issue. I'm thinking that many of the retail bikes have already been moved out of the factory floor. Yeah, so the bikes are over here. All the bikes are over here in a warehouse, at least the first uh, shipment. So um, whether they're on a truck going someplace or I don't know how that system works, but they'll, they'll have it fixed. And if not, it'll get fixed uh, pretty quick. And uh, what does Liberty Liberty Tree have to say? I'd kill myself on it. Thank you for a great bike review, as always. Well, that's that's not very uplifting, Liberty Tree. Killing yourself on it? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, no. Thanks, thanks for uh, thanks for chiming in and watching videos of bikes that you're going to kill yourself on. <laughs> it's not the not the best thing. We're on to the KTM 390. Yeah. Uh, Tan go Tiago 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 Ravel Ruvio Ruvio Tiago Ruvio. Everyone says that there's no power under five k. Weird. You can answer that question. Uh, it's an it's an it's a it's a an audio show. Yeah. So staring at the the microphone isn't going to train. I mean, I know you're really trying to transmit the information. 
Uh, so th- I haven't really ridden any other adventure bikes except for the CRF 250. Yeah, because you're, you're you're tiny you're tiny dude pretty, at the moment. Yeah. At, at, okay. So and at that that bike down. at at five grand does it have power? Yeah, for price. Yeah, I think it has. I think it has power. Yeah. I mean, everyone. I don't know who everyone is, but there's 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 enough power under five. I mean, it really starts to come alive. I mean, if you were to compare the power at three and four and five to what happens at six and seven and eight, there's no comparison that that it's definitely a lot less but when you're at three and four and five thousand rpms you don't need you don't need to be spinning the wheel down there you yeah. know especially a novice rider you don't need to have that kind of pull and throttle response that's gonna you know jerk them around on the bike so on that bike yeah that's uh it's a good smooth delivery and i think it has i think it has plenty of power i think they've done i think that motor is is it's you know for an experienced rider it's a little lackadaisical um, it's not, it's not that exciting until you get it up in the upper RPMs, but it's fine. Um, Jazzy Cos Zomp. Jazz Somp. Somp? Zomp. CZ. Somp. That's how, that's how I'm saying it. Somp. Uh, this KTM or CRF 250 HM, I'd like CRF, but 250 versus 390. Now is that is that a question? Is the first part this KTM or Honda CRF 250 HM is I think he means Honda, like you kids with your texting codes and stuff. Just 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 suffer it out and spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like CRF, but 250 versus 390. So he's he's uh, he's curious about the displacement, which is significantly more, and uh, you can tell. Yeah, actually, actually, you know, in all honesty. In, in in these tuned more tuned down motors, they're not race motors. You know, if it was a, if there was a two fifty race motor and a four hundred cc race motor, there'd be a really significant difference in power. But you're you're kind of expecting power all the time. But where you ride these bikes, kind of just in that three, four, five thousand RPM range, they just make good, decent power that kind of propels the motorcycle where it needs to go. It'll take you. You can climb pretty steep hills with them. You know, you can, you can get going highway speeds and it's not until you start going seven, eight, nine that you start really seeing what they, you know, what they have. And a KTM is probably, yeah, it's, it's a, it's probably a bit faster. I mean, it probably runs 10 miles an hour faster. You know, when you start revving it up, it's going a little bit faster, but it's not like you're going to run away from somebody on the other bike based on the, based on the, uh, displacement so i mean it's funny because i see people somebody's on a you know a gs 1200 and their buddy's on a crf 250 l rally and they both go down the road at the same speed (laughs) dirt road paved road they kind of go down the road at the same speed and there's a there's a roughly thousand cc difference between those two bikes and so it's like it's what you need on to the tenere uh stefan Stuff and and a. <laughs> I prevent driving by setting the rebound stiff and the compression fast as the rear at the rear. If the if it still dives too much, then set less rear preload or the hard way. Harder front springs and too much oil or extra spacers in the front. But then on acceleration it becomes a boat. Then set the rebound on the front stiffer. Uh, that's Stefan A's setup. So he's saying um, he prevents the diving by slowing the rebound down on the rear shock and and using more compression or compression fast at the rear. I'm not sure uh, what that is. I suspect there's a language, slight language barrier, but he's, he's talking about changing the attitude of the bike to overcome what, um, some people are saying is a softer front end on that bike. Uh, I just ran the compression in a little bit, left the rebound kind of open and was completely happy for, uh, for adventure riding on that particular bike. But there's, there's lots of ways to, to do it. Um, I could see where, you know, some people would want to go to stiffer front springs, but, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. And I'm, you know, 200 pounds. So it's all good. Uh, David Milton. 
I'm glad she brought that up. Fancy is cool until it goes wrong. So he's talking at minute 130, one minute and 37 seconds into the Tenere video. Um, Heather says she liked how simple the bike was. In other words, not a lot of buttons or controls and ABS and, and things like that. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a good play. Um, um, that's one of the that's one of the, the selling features of that bike is it is kind of simple and it it I hope that they always have a version that is that simple and then you know if they want to make one that's a little bit more advanced with some traction control and stuff uh, great but um, it, it was definitely uh, simple. Uh, Rex Dex PL, I think the question never was, is the Tenere Seven Hundred a good bike because it is. The question is, is it better than 790R? And the answer that to that is no. Uh, at this time in the show, <laughs> I'm going to tell you that uh, this show is brought to you by uh, KTM, <laughs> where, where I would tell you that if you asked me right now, and I got asked this question, Jimmy, right now, if you were going to go ride the Transamerica Trail, which is a great adventure bike ride, would you take the KTM 790 or the Tenere and just box stock? I would take the Tenere just straight up. It's, it's a, it just for all the reasons we talk about in the video, it's just comfortable and easy. The KTM is a little bit more, just like the name says, ready to race. The KTM 790 is a little bit more aggressive. And, um, you know, sometimes when I adventure ride, I want that. And sometimes I don't. And if I'm going to be on the bike for five to seven days, which is what you dream of doing on an adventure bike. Hmm. Probably go with that. That's that's probably why I still ride my KTM 1190 and I don't have a 790. It's not that I don't like the 790. I love it. It's a great bike. Uh, and sometimes people buy bikes for a little bit more excitement. But um, Rex Dex PL, uh, uh, I'm glad you were so definitive about that. The guy with uh, five subscribers and zero videos up on YouTube. <laughs> So you start your channel uh, and, you know, start your channel and, you know, put your video out and say that. <laughs> uh, uh, there goes the KTM sponsorship. First you blew the read and now I just said the Yamaha's better. Trevor, if he would watch the show, he'd be clapping, he'd be all cheering. He's like, yeah, Blue Crew, right? <laughs> so, um, uh, I think there was some questions up in the uh, up in the room real quick. I saw someone said, uh, oh, it's Baja Diaries. This is Mark. <laughs> the 2008 Sierra 450R was the greatest bike Honda made for motocross. The following year, when they introduced the fuel-injected Sierra 450R, it was the greatest tragedy in Honda's history. The 2008 was so good, the factory riders were buying one to two bikes extra to keep in their garage for back out, backup. That being said, even if the 2020 is back to back that level, it's been over 10 years now, and half of those riders are retired. So new riders will love their 20s, probably, won't even care, and will, we love this bike. I think is is a uh, grammar and punctuation got a little bit funky at the end there, but uh, yeah, the, let's see. I remember the 2008, which was a really good bike. It was when they finally got the carburetor and the and the aluminum frame and it was like every three years they got everything to play nice together. It's kind of like it's kind of like this bike. It's like it's like the engine and the suspension and the chassis are all playing nice with each other. It isn't like the suspension is too stiff and the you know and then the chassis is you know now the chassis being a little bit stiffer suffers for it and the motor's a little bit aggressive. So it's like it, but every seems like every three to five years they kind of everything kind of goes. The two thousand eight was that bike and. I felt the 2009, I was one of those guys that hopped on the 2009 and loved it. I was like, this is good because they went to that more front end steering. It, it steered, it had better steering than the old one, which was sort of their, their target, but the motor got really smooth. The, the 2008 kind of like was pretty spicy for a Honda. The 2009 with fuel injection got really smooth, which is what I like. Really good throttle response, but really smooth. And, uh, so, uh, I agree to disagree with you 100%. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, I think, you know, but that's that's the cool thing is we can all kind of have a different opinion on it and try to explain why. Um, I don't, I, I think factory riders are all a bunch of cuckoo brains anyways. 
they they get you know they tape crystals to their forks and they they need to have a special color coating on their bike and if they wear the wrong color gear they they win the next they lose the next weekend it's like like no wonder they get all spooked out about the bike and if somebody's beating them that bike's better like i need what did they oh, what did they change last week and then they're all chasing their tails on that stuff so uh hey mark you got it what do you have a 2008 sitting in your shop right now and you're trying to sell it on <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I, I have single-handedly driven the price of Husaberg 570s through the roof. And the problem is I'm not even trying to sell mine. Um, so there we go. Uh, Logan, do we have any more questions on the on the agenda? On this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, The Moose Change. S. Mac and N- Thank you. You are the man. I'm not the man. Roger DeCoster is the man. I just can change a moose. Uh, the, I'll bet you Roger DeCoster could change a moose. Probably. Uh, I bet you he just like stares at it and it kind of jumps off the tire. He he has kind of he has kind of a he's the nicest guy, but he has kind of a mean stare. I've seen he's given it to me a couple times. He deserved to. <laughs> so, okay, YZ450 questions. Uh, Ronnie Pete. Try GC map, good control, uh, tones down the power. To me, it spreads the power out more evenly throughout the range. I loved it. I don't know what GC map is, by the way. So he's talking about one of the maps you can send to your thing through the power tuner. Well, I think that's the last question there. Um, but uh, every there, I think that's the thing right now is... Um, is uh, you you know every there's there's the there's the TP maps that stands for Travis Preston there's TP maps and then there's other there's other versions I have a Jimmy Lewis map by the way uh, that's they basically took one of their they took their map that they call the Magic Map and since I asked for some changes to it then they just named it the Jimmy Lewis map so now there is one with my name on it so I feel pretty special too uh, it's probably for a guy that likes to ride a gear high and and doesn't want the power to come on so strong that the front wheel lifts off the ground, which is what was happening with the stock maps on the, especially Glen Helen. Cause you come out of some of those bowl turns and, and start going up the hill. And if that, if right then the, you know, it really starts getting traction and picking up it's, especially with the tire that's on it, the Dunlop tire, like when that thing gets stood up straight, it wants to hook up and it, all things happen at once. And I was really struggling keeping the front end on the ground on that particular bike. So we've got a, you know, got a map for that, but, um, I would like to try the GC map. Um, fortunately I don't have a YZ 450 right now, uh, but send me that map. Cause next time I ride one, I will, uh, I would like good control, but I, it's funny because I don't like toning down the power per se. And, and like I, in the Honda video, I'm running it on the aggressive map. And, and I like, I always tell people I like smooth power, but for me, if I run it in the standard map, it's too aggressive because I have to like kind of rev it a little bit to get the the bike to pull. And I tend to have to, to ride in the proper gear around the turn and then shift immediately coming out of the turn where my style is to be a gear high and not use, you know, not have to use so much RPM and then maybe use a little bit of clutch to kind of come out of the turn and then get off the clutch and then just use all the throttle. So that that really snappy character that generally the more aggressive maps have, I don't call it snappy, the throttle response that that character has. Now, by being in the gear tall, it smooths it out. So it's almost like a mellow map for me. It's the opposite of what, you know, what is kind of maybe intended for it, where like a good rider would still be a gear low and they would hit the throttle like they normally do. And that thing would, it would loop out on me. <laughs> you know, it would, it would accelerate too hard. It'd be doing what the Yamaha kind of does stock. And so, so that's that. And that's the awesome thing about some of the tuners is that you can take these bikes and really, really customize the motor and you don't need to, you know, you don't need to go to an exhaust. You don't have to do cams. You don't have to do, you know, throttle bodies or all different kinds of crazy stuff. It's just, uh, just you push buttons on the phone, just like Logan's doing right now. What's the next question? That one. Oh, that one? Yeah. What's what's her name? Who? Uh, Ashanti? Ashanti? Nunez. Nunez, yeah. What does she say, Logan? Uh, she's <laughs> pointing it at me, and she says, I'm sing- single with hard eyes and a sad crying emoji. Right. 
What does that mean? I have no clue. Yeah, you don't want to know that those things come onto the YouTube channel at about two o'clock at the night. So good thing you're 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 in bed sleeping, thinking about your next day's homework. None of this. Yeah, I'm saying how's how's the how's the dating scene going? Got them stacked like cordwood, right? That phone would be just vibrating off the table. It was on vibrate, huh? No. No. Okay. Just checking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got any more questions in the chat room? Uh. Most are just comments. Comments stuff. back to Mark on the, uh, everybody's saying that that 2008 FCR carb was the best. Uh, some people, let's see, Logan did an awesome job at Glen Helen racing. Oh, Mason, Mason had an eye on you. Yeah. How, how did you do Logan? So you raced works this weekend. Yeah. And you rode your. 125. Right. What happened to the Yamahas? Don't race those yet. Your KTM guy. Yeah. Right. Okay. Good. And how'd you do? Uh, don't know about the one thing, but I got fourth in the one twenty five class. Okay, yeah. what was it? What was the other class? It was a is it an age class or is it an age op- class? It's age class. It's an op- open age class, yeah. so kids could ride bigger bikes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's all like four fifties and. Right. So you know what you do in that one, right? On that one. You line up on your 125 in that class. You line up on the inside, and you know they they don't they don't drop the gate. They do the flag, right? Yeah. You jump the flag a little bit and just cut across in front of all those dudes. <laughs> that's that's what you do in that class. I mean, they're not if they can't pass you after you cut them off, then it's their problem, right? <laughs> a lot of 450s. <laughs> a lot of 450s? Yeah. yeah. They they can't they they have to go through you just just to get just jump in front yeah, of them and it's all good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, how was it? Fun? Good? Yeah. Real fun. Yeah. So back back in the dirt bike mode. Yep. It's finally not too hot to ride dirt bike. You come out and start training with me? Yeah. Yep. Thursday. I think we might do it. We might do a little training. I got a guy that wants to come out and work on some of his riding skills. So I have right. a I have a couple uh couple we'll 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 you can you can be a student again. Because you know all you know all the stuff. For the school? Yeah. 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 So you can come and be a student and then we'll work on it. We'll get you so that that way when you do jump those guys in the 450, you just stay in front of them. They'll never be able to get by. I can tell you how to ride a really wide bike. <laughs> get good starts, ride a wide bike. This is way easier than trying to come through the pack. <laughs> um, okay. So we have any other questions? It was kind of, a, kind of a short night. I actually kind of tossed out. Into some of the uh, the the dual sport and um, adventure riding forms. To, I, I I said I can answer questions tonight because they're they're ask they're always asking these questions and they can't they I can I can look at the thread and they don't get an answer. Like they get seven different, I would call them suggestions of varying um, levels of expertise from none at all to to whoa i wouldn't do that and then every once in a while there's a nugget of knowledge in there to somebody that but if if i asked that question i would not know which one of those answers was the right answer yeah that's the that's the hard thing about it i i feel the same way when i go like if i'm going to uh go hang a door for instance there's somebody here knows how to hang a door you i i wouldn't even know where to start asking questions and i heard erica asking a question about like doors or something or mentioning something about it it's like I didn't even know where to start. And if I went and watched a video on YouTube and if a guy presented himself right, was flashy enough and had looked like he had the tools and stuff, he could probably tell me how to do it absolutely positively the wrong way. And I would think he was right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so um, same goes for the motorcycle stuff. So um, yeah, if you, if you have friends that, uh, are in need of uh, <laughs> of information. They keep asking you questions that maybe you're struggling to answer. Um, turn them on to the show. Uh, like we said, um, there is going to be a Dirt Bike Test digital magazine probably coming out um, early November, very early November. And uh, we're going to see how uh, the industry responds to this. Uh, we've got all of our feelers are out for the advertising right now. We've got some pretty good response. And... Um, uh, and a ton of work ahead of us. A lot of work uh, getting all the bikes and stuff tested, things we need to get shot. So um, it's going to be cool. So if you uh, if you are into that, if you actually if you know anybody if you know anybody who's interested in running ads in a, in a magazine needs to have their product shown someplace, uh, have them reach out to me. 
And Travis Langley asked, do you ever do training in the Sacramento or Reno area? Um, no, I don't, Travis. We're out here in beautiful, lovely, Pahrump, Nevada. Pahrump, Pahrump, Nevada. I can't even say it. Pahrump, Nevada, Valley of the Dirt People, where our classroom is quite possibly the most scenic place that you will ever get to learn how to ride a motorcycle in. So uh, it's uh, www.jimmylewisoffroad.com. We start up schools in October. I think our first class is now pretty much sold out. Um, and then we have one in November that is getting close. But um, it's kind of all it, the, our, our, our regulations on group gatherings and stuff are kind of changing a little bit. So I have to be really careful about that. But um, that's what, hey, hey, if you want to take a class this weekend, Travis, and you want to drive up to, uh, up, uh, you know, a little bit north of Portland, up in the uh, central Washington area, uh, Cispus Cycles uh, is doing classes up there this weekend. So they have openings. I know that because they are, they teach our program. Um, and awesome instructors, Paul Neff, uh, Maria Fosberg, and uh, uh, Jake, I'm going to mispronounce his last name, uh, Mettler. He was in the, he was in the room earlier, Met Metter. Mettler, let me see if I can find his thing so I can remember how to say his, Mateer, Mateer, Jake Mateer. Um, but uh, they are, uh, they're doing a class this weekend and they teach it in a, in the second most beautiful place. Well, it's a little bit more green than us, which is a little bit more green. <laughs> so um, anyways, uh, any other questions, Logan? Do you have any, you had some questions for me, right? Nope. No. Okay. You got your KTM thing all finished? Uh, I just cleaned it up a bit. Cleaned it up a bit. Okay, give it a run. I'm gonna. I'll. I'll. I'll chime in when you, when and if it gets. It gets rough. You got to hit the points. Um, based out of Matting uh, Hoffman. Okay, I'm just gonna give you one thing. Is ready to race in there? Yes. Okay, good. That's that's important. I see that because it's capitalized in this one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> based out of Matting Hoffman, Aust Austria, and North American headquarters. In Marietta, California, KTM has set the standards for motorcycle manufacturing and development. KTM has provided a ready-to-race mentality in every product it develops and every move it makes. What about Fierce Competitor? Fierce Competitor will be added next week. Okay. And then racetracks around the world? Okay. How about the global success part? Got to put that in there, too. <laughs> or just change everything and make it, make it your own. So anyways, hey, thanks to KTM. Also, thanks to Recluse. We didn't talk about, you know, we didn't have one Recluse question this week. Mm -mm. That's the first thing. It's, you know why? Because we answered all of them on show number 76. We answered every Recluse question known to man. And everybody's Recluse is out there working perfect. If you want to improve a skill level, or maybe you want to just get whole shots on your motocross bike, or you want to take your clutch lever off, throw it in the trash can, and have a rear brake up there, Recluse has a solution for you. They have uh, clutches for cruisers and adventure bikes and street bikes, so all kinds of stuff. And they have a lot of just standard, good old-fashioned replacement clutch components as well as oil. So uh, check out Recluse, and um, there's a couple other things. Climb gear is always good. Yeah. I didn't wear any climb gear today at all. I wore climb underwear yesterday. <laughs> Didn't have to tell you that, <laughs> but I did. Uh, so, uh, climb is man. They're they're going heavy in the snow machine uh, gear right now. They're doing lots of cool videos and stuff, uh, and about the technology they put into a lot of their snow products. And if you don't think that trickles over into the awesome dirt bike gear they make, you're crazy. Uh, so if you want to, if you have a snow machine and you're interested in staying warm in the winter, they have some pretty cool technical jackets and stuff like that. So I saw that. Um, what what was his name? Dante. Dante yeah, won won the pro race at the works race. I saw I saw a press release on that. Pretty cool. Um, but we don't talk about racing on the show unless it's Logan or maybe Trevor a little bit. And I don't race anymore, so that's why I'm over it. So um, I can I can usually win the race as long as we're just talking about it. If we don't if we don't have to actually compete. So everybody, thanks for joining. Um, oh wait, got a question. Why does Honda still use the HPSD dampers on the CRS? Um, does Honda still? No, they don't. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, so they they do not have that damper on there. And I heard some people saying. 
And this is funny. They said, well, the bike feels a little bit you know, unstable compared to the old one. If they would have had the steering stabilizer, I would have fixed it. Here's the funny thing about that steering stabilizer. It doesn't, unless you take it and have it completely revalved and done do some different stuff to it, it doesn't really help the, 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 the instability, that kind of the head shaky kind of feel. Where that damper works is when you've got the bars turned and you're in a turn, it helps keep them turned. So it, 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 it kind of does the opposite of what most steering dampers do for the most part. It, 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 it damps when the bars get turned and that's why it, it's at straight angle. And as it moves over off to the side, it actually has more swing and push. So it's more effective the farther you turn the bars. So what it was meant is they found that their guys could go into turns. And, and I think the riding styles have changed where maybe that damper isn't, especially for the top, top guys, isn't as effective anymore. But they would find that they would go into the turn and it would help the bike stay down in the turn. It wouldn't stand up as much. And it is noticeable if you go, if you just take the damper on and off. I like that. I actually really do feel, and for motocross, I really like that, that um, type of damper feel. Uh, I think there's the mount still on it. Um, if you, um, if you want to mount it up and uh, yeah. So, uh, sorry for uh, taking so long to get that question. Uh, now I lost his name. I think it was. Um, see how see how bad I am? Just scrolling through. The, actually, I think I think Facebook adjusts the. <laughs> it, it, as the as it updates, all the questions go a little bit. Uh, it was Jeffrey. Wag 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 Long talk. Is that how you say it? Was problem? <laughs> okay. Uh, right on, everybody. And uh, with that, what are we going to do?